elnézést kérek mindenkitől, uh, angolul készült a dolog. So I'm going to talk about kit build aircraft, uh, which are uh, assembled by the buyer from prefabricated parts. Now, don't think about something of IKEA furniture. We're talking about hundreds of work hours, so it's a little bit more complicated to assemble an aircraft, and it might need special uh, some special knowledge. But uh, still, you get the, the difficult to fabricate parts, and you also get the the build instructions and the full documentation. So this is something like open source. And it, it, by itself, a kit-built aircraft are nothing new. Actually, the first serially produced aircraft was a kit. This one. Kit-built aircraft have always been, from the very beginning, at the forefront of innovation. Many technologies that currently exist in aircraft have first been tested in kit-builds. Uh, for example, one of the greatest breakthroughs was the use of composite materials which came from boat building like fiberglass or uh, uh, carbon fiber which dramatically reduced the weight and also increased the possibilities which you can achieve within a given weight limitation about which I'm going to talk a little bit later and the nice thing about this is that it's very similar to open source software so what you get here is that the manufacturer, the seller, does not assume any liability, no warranties, nothing. You take all the risks and he doesn't need to have huge fabrication facilities and assembly hangers for aircraft. So new things can be tried with minimal investment. And also this kit building builds around itself a enthusiastic and knowledgeable community, forums, and so on. So it's really the hotbed of innovation. Uh, it also provides uh, increased measures of security compared to what you're usually used on aircraft because we're talking about things that are built by amateurs. So typically the designs are very, very safe. They're not intended for stunt flying. So they're resistant to spins and stalls. Usually, uh, they have dual controls for training and the so-called ballistic recovery system, which uh, takes you down safely, including the aircraft. Now, if you, if you bail out using a ballistic chute, think about the solid rocket motor that shoots the uh, parachute out, opens it and lands you. And after that, of course, to make the aircraft airworthy again, you will need to spend thousands of euros, but you survive and the aircraft survives. Also, typically good advice is to fly under visual meteorological conditions, so when you can actually see the ground and the weather is nice. And also, you typically stay out of controlled airspace. So this way, you can actually be safe and fly around. Another uh, very attractive feature of uh, kit-built aircraft is that it simplifies the usual mess that is the regulatory framework around aviation. So typical aircraft have all these different roles which are licensed uh, by the manufacturer and you need separate multi-thousand euro training programs to complete to assume any of these roles and even you can be a maintainer that is certified for like the 200 hour repair and for but not for the 2000 hour repairs so uh, if you are building the aircraft yourself you can assume many of these roles relatively simply and unlike with the big aircraft you can actually repair and add stuff to your own aircraft so uh, what is it that really makes it new technology? Well, first of all, I should mention this Rotax 912 an aircraft engine. It's a beautiful engine. I can talk for hours about it. This is a light engine, and almost all of the aircraft use it. It's cheap, powerful, and here you can see that you can actually use non-certified parts. So this exhaust system is obviously not an aircraft certified one, but you can build it in and you can experiment with it at, at your own risk. And uh, this is an aircraft that is manufactured 
in Slovenia and you can kit build it, it's the Mistral virus. This is the aircraft that I'm currently flying, er, learning, fl learning to fly. And uh, it has very attractive characteristics, so it, you can use it as a motor glider, but you can also travel far and fast. Uh, so if you have any questions about it, I will be happy to answer. Thank you so much for your attention. Uh, the question was, where can you land with such aircraft in Hungary? The surprising answer is that Hungary is full of small airfields, really, really full. Around Balaton, there are like 10. Around Budapest, there are a dozen as well. So there are many, many small airfields on which you can land. But actually, it's true that you can land on sufficiently smooth uh, surfaces. Again, this is subject to some regulation, but basically, if it's smooth enough, you can land on it. The uh, landing distance is really, really short. Uh, here we're talking about a few hundred meters, like 200, 300, not more. Great question, I expected it. How much does it cost? Uh, the range of such kits varies greatly. The cheapest are about 10,000 euros, and the most expensive ones are about 100,000 euros. So that's the price range. Uh, how many aircraft, how many home built aircraft there are in Europe or in this area? Thousands. Uh, in different countries, because of the regulatory environment, this number differs. And surprisingly enough, one of the most liberal countries in terms of airspace control is France, which also happens to be a beautiful country with lots of castles and uh, beautiful nature. So if you want to fly around on your own aircraft, France is the place to go. But in other European countries, there are quite a few as well, including here in Hungary. We also have a couple of dozen home-built aircrafts. Uh, the question was, what is the range with a full tank? It also varies, depends on the aircraft. It typically varies from a few hundred kilometers up to 2,000. I haven't heard of a home build that, is, uh, that can fly for longer than uh, 2,000 kilometers. Uh, but with special modifications, with an aircraft like this, people have actually flown from Slovenia to Australia. So it is doable, but the general, if, if you just build it according to the plans, you will be able to fly a little less than 2,000 kilometers, but in Europe that gets you pretty far. <laughs> Next question, how fast they are? Again, this depends greatly on the model. Uh, the uh, cruising speeds are typically between 100 kilometers an hour up to 400 kilometers an hour. This particular airplane cruises at uh, 230, 240 kilometers an hour. <laughs> oh, hybrids. Uh, so whether there are other propulsion systems than uh, piston engines. Yes, actually this company, Pipistrel, also manufactures hybrid and even fully electrical aircraft. So you can go full electric. They have a motor glider, so it's basically a glider that uses an engine only for the takeoff, and then after the takeoff you cut the engine and fly, which is fully electric. And it co comes in a big casing, which is fully covered with solar uh, panels, so you can actually dra drag your drag your aircraft to the airfield, leave it for a few days, it will charge it, and then you unpack it, put on the wings, and then you can fly. And it's fully electric, zero emission, very quiet, beautiful thing. Last question. Last question, anyone? How do you avoid controlled airspace? Do you have maps? Uh, how do I avoid controlled airspace and whether we have maps? Yes, uh, you avoid controlled airspace by looking at maps. Also, if you have a radio on board, then the uh, General informing Flight Information <coughs> Service will warn you if you're nearing controlled airspace. And here I would like to advertise my friend Akos' project, which is an open source uh, 
a map, it's called Open Aviation Map, which you can download on your Android tablet and use it in flight. <laughs> and it has all the airspaces of Hungary included. 